Hello! Welcome to the Glendale Heights showroom. Uh, my name is Chef Paul. Uh, today we are going to focus on our Wolf Gas range. Uh, we're going to specifically focus a little bit on the griddle, the oven, as well as the dual stack burners themselves. Uh, so today we're actually going to make some crab cakes. The recipe is already posted down below or you can just find it on our main page. Uh, so quickly to start, uh, the recipe very, very simple to follow. I just quickly want to show everyone how to form nice, wonderful kind of rounds into the mold itself. So I have a little bit of that, that crab mix in here. I'm taking a little bit of my panko breadcrumbs, kind of fill up one side and then the other. And then I want to just only gently press it in. I don't want a very tight, compact crab cake because I want it to keep it nice and light and delicate. So kind of both sides, shake off that excess as much as you can. And then just like that, your cat cake should fall out again. Now you got these nice, wonderful uh, molded cakes. Now let's, uh, so our crab cakes are all finished up. We're going to move on to the, to the range itself. So here, my griddle is already preheated to 350 degrees. I already have one crab cake on there. But we got to quickly get rest of them on. So here I have a little bit of canola oil. I want just a very thin layer on there. Now, gently, these, these are very, very gentle, so we have to use a little bit of finesse while we're cooking. So we're gonna evenly place all of these crab cakes. So, while those are going, we're gonna let those kind of hang out and develop a nice sear. Over here in my, on my dual stack burners, I have a pot of water. So it is, we're actually gonna poach some eggs. We're actually gonna make a little crab cake Benedict today. So I have my crab cakes working. I will have a little bit of more canola oil. And I wanna to quickly toast up some of these gorgeous English muffins. I wanna get them nice and crispy, bring out some of that beautiful crunchy texture. Here in this pot, dual stack burner. So what that means is every single wolf burner is a dual stack burner. Each burner has two sets of gas lines and two sets of ports that run through every single burner. So here, for example, we see two, but I kind of want to just make, let you think that there's actually, just pretend like there's four. So really quickly, what that means is here's our high, high. You can see how big that flame is. Let's me sear and develop wonderful flavor, bring water up to boil very quickly. As I keep turning it, that flame gets lower and lower. Eventually that knob is gonna stop. You can see that that flame is very, very low. Once that knob stops, I'm gonna push it in and keep turning. It's gonna activate that second set of pores that are underneath. And then that can let me get to extremely low temperatures. So really quick again, high, 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 low, and then down to simmer high, all the way down to low, low. So massive amounts of temperature and control. So for my poached eggs, I'm actually gonna utilize a low temperature. Poaching eggs is a very delicate process. Just takes a little bit of time. So here in my pot, I have a little bit of water, some white vinegar, as well as a little bit of salt. Salt is gonna do two things for us. Number one is gonna season our water, to help season our egg. We're gonna kind of enhance that flavor. And number two, the vinegar is gonna help coagulate the egg white so you get a nice, firm, but delicate egg white, but still keep that yolk nice and soft. So, our water is already up to temperature. We're looking at about 190 degrees Fahrenheit. I have a couple of eggs that are already cracked in this little bowl here, but while that water is nice and warm, I want to create a little vortex in the water. That's gonna help the egg white wrap around the egg yolk and help give me that beautiful poached egg look. So while that water is spinning, you want a nice consistent spin. You don't need a, you don't need a, a hurricane here or anything, but I'm just gonna gently drop one egg at a time. And you can see that the egg yolk is wrapping around itself. So because I have that, that low heat capability, I can let that egg just slowly poach and don't touch it. So while that's simmering away, let's go ahead and take a look at our crab cakes. So let's take a look here. So what we had on a little bit earlier, but you can see that gorgeous even color. All right, that one needs a little more time. So we simply just gonna leave it. But nice even color. We're gonna let both sides sear. I'm gonna get a little bit more oil on there just to make sure that panko breadcrumb gets a nice crispy texture. So while our crab cakes are finishing up over here, I wanna talk about our convection oven. So 
This is our gas convection oven. Uh, all of our ovens, Wolf ovens, are convection. Convection is the most powerful, important tool in the kitchen, in my opinion, because what convection does for us is it cooks our food quicker, it helps brown my food, it helps develop uh, caramelization and build that crust. It helps me cook multiple racks of food at once uh, if, if they need that same specific temperature. Um, so here, it, just like the recipe mentioned, I have it set to 400 degrees. It is already preheated. But the most important thing that I want to show everyone is how to turn on that, that powerful single convection fan. So over here, I have two buttons. One is light and one is convection. I'm simply going to turn on, turn that button on and you can immediately hear that powerful convection fan starting to kick on. So it's circulating that, that gorgeous hot air throughout to give me all those wonderful benefits of convection. So I think our, our, our crab cakes might be ready to flip. Uh, you can see I have a little bit of color, but the wonderful thing is you notice they're all exactly the same. This one had a little more time, but I was gonna give that one more minute just to make sure I help sear up the other side and develop that wonderful flavor. Let's, let's quickly take a look at our English muffins. Look at that, gorgeous. Beautiful color, we can see it. We're getting all that good flavor and texture that we like. So I'm gonna quickly let the other side kind of toast up while we take our crab cakes. And now, because they are, they are, already, they are already seared, all I wanna do is gently heat up the inside of the cake and make sure it's nice and warm. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw those down into my convection oven. Right, you can hear that powerful fan, that recovery time of that heat is very quick, but just about five, six minutes until they're nice and warm. So let's move over our English muffins. These are nice and done. Really quickly, how to clean the griddle, one quick tip. Every time I'm done using it, I just like to take my spatula, remove any excess debris or anything that may have been stuck to it, and any of that excess oil, and drop it down into this removable tray. So here, as you can see, the tray actually comes out. Nice and easy, dispose of the oil every time you're done. But since we're done utilizing the griddle, I'm gonna wipe off any excess oil. I'm gonna turn the griddle off, and then you take your, your disposable griddle towel, designated griddle towel as I like to call it. You're gonna simply wipe it down, and once it's completely cool, throw your cover back on. It's as simple as cleaning that, but a full cleaning tutorial Actually, perfect timing. If you have any questions on cleaning your griddle, reach out to the showroom, reach out to myself, and I would love to walk through kind of the whole process of cleaning, cleaning the, the griddle top. So, but very, very simple, beautiful, even color. Let's take a look at our poached eggs here really quickly. So, oh yeah, we can see they're beautiful, nice and delicate. The egg white is nice and set but that egg yolk is still soft. All right, so I have a little, t I have a towel here. I'm just gonna drop it on there to blot off any of the excess water that's on there. But really quickly, here's a good example. Beautiful, firm egg white, but nice, soft egg yolk. So, right there. While that is waiting for us, I wanna quickly talk about my salad for the day. So here I have a nice mix, or a, a, a spring mix of uh, greens. Uh, but inside the crab cake itself, we actually have some, some apples, some finely diced apples, some, some uh, red onions, some mustard, all these wonderful flavors. But crab meat itself is very, very sweet, and, and I like to balance out my dishes and, and your food. Uh, so apples are nice and tart, but, but nice and sweet at the same time. So here I have some gorgeous watermelon radishes that we quickly shaved on a mandolin, very, very thin. Some nice Easter radishes. You can use uh, any 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 type of radishes you have. Whatever looks good at the supermarket that day. So here, a little bit of greens, some of my apples. Now we're going to move over. And a couple of things that I want to do. So first I have to season up my salad. Very, very important. A little bit of salt goes a long way. Here I'm using a mulled and sea salt. It's going to help give me a little bit more texture and crunch. As well as here, I have a little bit of uh, lemon vinaigrette. Nice and light. I don't want too much. I want to keep those greens nice and delicate. I'm going to grab a little spoon here. So be very gentle. Fold that dressing throughout. I don't want to crush or bruise any of those gorgeous apples or radishes that we're using. 
So my salad is nice and dressed. My crab cakes are just about ready to come out. Let's go ahead and start, uh, let's start plating this together. So, crab cakes, right? You can see they're all nice and brown and beautiful. Let's grab our poached eggs, our English muffins. And let's start building this. Oh, I need a spoon for my eggs. Oh my goodness. So quickly, English muffins down. We're gonna put two, the two nice, nice servings. So these are nice and warm, be very delicate with them. Right. Two crab cakes there. I like to make a little tiny divot just so I give a nice little little nest for my eggs over here. Be careful not to pop that yolk. Right there, egg yolk on top. Here's the other one. So now, just a couple more steps, but here's that gorgeous salad that we had, right? Nice, bright, just really cut through all that richness of the crab cakes. So here, gorgeous little salad. And to top it all off, made a little hollandaise sauce. Very, very, very easy, simple recipe to make. Um, I don't have any, any particular favorites, but feel free to use your favorite recipe. But just right over the top, make sure to glaze those gorgeous eggs. A little bit more richness, but just tie it all together, maybe around the plate. And just a little bit of more mold and sea salt on top. But as you see, it's very, very simple, very, very easy. Restaurant quality meals right at home. So a couple of tips that I like to do is the crab cakes. I, actually, I can actually sear them on my griddle uh, a little bit in advance, a couple, a couple of minutes or even hours in advance. And when your guests are there ready to arrive, just throw it in the oven and make sure it's nice and warm and re crisp them up. So utilizing my griddle, I was able to sear, get that beautiful even blanket of heat to get consistent color throughout. I'm using my convection oven, that single convection fan to really make sure my crab cake is warm and, and wonderful and crispy, as well as that dual stack burner, not only to hold something as delicate as a hollandaise sauce, nice and warm without, without breaking or messing up the texture, but I'm able to poach eggs at a very delicate temperature. It's all about that temperature control. So if you have any questions, feel free, reach out. You know, we can, we can work on this together. But uh, I just want to quickly say that I am, again, here at the Glendale Heights showroom. We are taking appointments. Uh, come visit the showroom by appointment only. You know, if you have any questions, any product questions, or, or kind of just any, anything that we can help answer or facilitate for you, I uh, greatly appreciate it. Reach out to us. Uh, give us a phone call. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.